In this video we're going to take a look at some of the MISC challenges from the Hack the Box Cyber Apocalypse 2021 CTF. The first challenge we'll take a look at is Input as a Service. The description says, in order to blend with the extraterrestrials we need to talk and sound like them. Try some phrases in order to see if you can make them believe you're one of them. So there's no files to download for this one, we just have a Docker instance that we need to spawn, which I've already got running. So let's minimize this and try and connect to it with Netcat. And we get this prompt saying, do you sound like an alien? So we can try and enter something in here. We get name high is not defined. So I basically just went through this and tried to enter in some different commands, some different data types. So if we enter in a number here, you'll see that it just prints that back to us. If we try that again, and let's put high inside some quotes. And we'll see that it actually prints the string back to us. We could have a look to see if we can do like... So if we provide an equation as well, it'll also print that back to us. Um, so we have some execution here. I was playing around with this and found that running the directory command, we get back some information. And let's just have a look at a Python, a cheat sheet for escaping Python jails. So I'm just going to hack tricks website here. It can be useful for looking up uh, CTF challenge info. So I went through this and basically tried out some of the different commands that we have available. Let me scroll down to the useful stuff. Um, so when we call in, uh, here's the built-ins. Okay, so let me just try and let me go back here. Let's do the directory command again, but this time we'll put in two backslashes here to try and we want to try and list all of these items and. What we're interested in, in this case, we have the built-ins. So if I actually just try and take a copy of this, I'll just paste this in. Oh, let me run it again. Paste that in, and you'll see that it actually prints out. It lists the files which are in the directory. One of them is flag.txt, and one is input as a service. So we can just repeat the same thing then. Let's, let's do that again. But this time, let's cat flag.txt and you'll see that we print out our flag. So that was a nice easy Python jail to escape or Python challenge and uh, let's move on to the next one. The next challenge is called build yourself in and it says the extraterrestrials have upgraded their authentication system and now only them are able to pass. Did you manage to learn the language well enough in order to bypass the authorization check? So this is building on from our input as a service challenge where we had to escape the Pi jail. We don't have any files to download, we've just got the Docker instance, so let's go and try and connect to it with Netcat and see what we get. So we get this, only something or other is allowed, let's take a copy of this and just paste it into the browser and see what we get. So it's a alien emoji. Let's also go and grab the Hacktricks link that we went to previously. So if you remember in the last example, we were able to, we listed the directory and then Whereas it, we were able to call the built-ins dict to import OS and then we listed the files in the directory. Once we knew what the flag was called, we just um, called cat flag.txt here. So it was literally a case of, let's take this back. In our last example, it was literally a case of saying cat flag.txt and that was enough for us to print the flag and escape this pie jail. Now we see that the issue is that no quotes are allowed. So as soon as we enter a quote there, it's going to exit. So let's try that again and see that's the case as well. So I played around with this in terms of trying with different values. Let's just try something normal. So let's try and say print, oh we can't print quotes. Let's try and print um, 1337. And you see that prints okay. We can try and print something else. and after the second thing's printed, it'll exit. So that gives you, it would give me a hint that we, we're supposed to be running two commands, or we're definitely not supposed to run more than two commands anyway. I did actually have a script set up to kind of brute force in terms of um, trying to list out different subclasses and stuff like that, but we'll go into that a little bit more in a second. So let's connect to that again. Let's try something else. 
I'm going to put in a statement to say we want to print x for x in and then we're looping through the class base subclasses and if we enter that and print that out it does print out the list of all the various classes that we need so I spent a little bit of time working through these to see if there was anything of interest and essentially googling different um, potential classes that could be used and found that the OS dot wrap underscore close uh, is of use to us so I took a copy of um, you could do the you could do this you could do this in a better way but I took a copy of all of these strings and pasted them basically into a text editor and then whichever line this was on ended up being 132 so let me try and now we'll say we just want to print out the class base subclass at 132 which should be our OS wrap close and we want to in fact let me just before we even do that let's just verify that so yeah we can see that that's definitely the correct index for our OS underscore wrap close so let's try and connect again I'm going to paste this in instead so we want to list the init globals and let's if we hit enter we get a lot of stuff back here we actually get a lot of IP addresses and I guess this is some of the other challenges or I'm actually not too sure it looks like yeah it, yeah it looks like some so we have the misc alien camp so that's one of the challenges and it has the port and it has some of the internal IPs but uh, if we scroll up towards the top of this there's actually quite a lot of data there but let's go up towards the top and it's quite hard to get to the right place here okay here we go so we're at the beginning and we can see that here we have some of our packages or built-in functions so as we start to go through and list these let me see oh sorry here's our here's our built-ins here um, so we can see basically we have a lot of different functions here we have we can see our open we can see um, let me try and see where's s I'm looking for system uh, system so yeah so our goal is going to be to try and call system like we did in our last example so again let me just let's go back to the command so this is what we want to do we want to call system but we're not able to in, to use these quotes here so um, we can try well essentially what I tried to do first of all was to use that index so I took a copy of this array and uh, copied it into a text editor and then replaced the space with a new line and then found that the system function was actually on uh, offset 280 so I tried to um, I tried to just access the system function using the the index but that didn't actually work for us and a little bit of playing around with this and eventually came to another solution which is because we're not able to use quotes we need to build up our strings some other way um, I did also try things like uh, using Unicode characters and just trying to even use like the char so we can like try and say if we could work out what the if we were able to to do let's say print uh, char and then uh, I don't know 90 or 99 or something but um, we're, we're not able to to print that and I couldn't get that to work so let's have a look at the solution that I did come up with so we can access the dock and you can see here I've just done a loop there to print out the dock and um, you can see we've got a different character on each line so let me take a copy of these and let's just open up Sublime paste those in so essentially what we can do here rather than because we can't enter quotes any characters that we need we can take from the dock here based on the index so I I went through this kind of manually what you could do really is is put put together a script to loop through and if we wanted to find the string system we would just loop through each of the characters that it finds here and then we would just map up the indexes with you know the indexes of the string we need it'd be a lot uh, a lot better than doing it manually but um, that's how I initially solved it so we'll just go through that way rather than I'm not going to write a script now for it because it's all solved and working but um, so what we can do then is let's go back here and if I paste in uh, this command which is going to print out we're printing out the subclass which was that OS uh, wrap function and then the init globals as we did and then right here instead of selecting the system because remember we can't just 
put in a quotes and then the string system we're selecting the indexes from the doc and if I try to run that let's print that and you'll see that actually we've printed out uh, in this case um, we've listed the directories because let me uh, let me just take a copy of I, th I thought that was going to print out the string let me take a copy of that uh, run that again print so this is the doc you can see here 198619 so it's SYS uh, we print that out and that's got our system um, the problem that I had here, and it was really unfortunate, is I was obviously we've listed the file now. We know that where the flag is. It's called flag.txt. I went through the whole of this um, document, or, or the whole of this doc string, to find all the characters we need, and I found every single character except X. So there's no X at all in there. So um, I kind of got stuck on this for a little while. You can see then the solution. So the closest I got was this cat flag dot t t t um, without the without being able to find the x and we don't have any asterisks or anything like that where we can just use a wildcard. So I was looking for a lot of other commands and things like that before. I eventually just tried to get a shell, which I should have really tried earlier, but I assumed for some reason I don't know I assumed that the goal wasn't to get a shell, was to just print the flag. So as it has been in all the other challenges apart from the pwn challenges, but um, so. Well, let's just try and do it with the shell. So I'll print that in. You can see that it's didn't return any output. But now, if we run id, we can see we're logged in as root, and now we can cat out the flag.txt. So yeah, it'd be good to put together a pwn tool script for this. I did have a pwn tool script initially, but essentially we could automate this so that we're we loop through the docs characters and then whatever commands, whatever OS commands we want to run, we just build our strings using that without having to manually go through and work out the indexes. The next challenge is called Alien Camp and it says the Ministry of Galactic Defense now accepts human applicants for the specialized warrior unit in exchange for the debt to be erased. We do not want to subject our people to this training and to be used as pawns in their little games. We need you to send 500 of their questions to pass their test and take them down from the inside. So again, we don't have any files to download. We just have a Docker instance to spawn. So let's, uh, well, let me grab this and let's just have a look at it first of all. So we can run netcat, paste that in, and we get to the alien camp. We can enter in one of two options, either one, which is a question mark, or two to take a test. So let's do one first of all. You can see we get here. Here is a little help, and it maps some characters, some characters which can't be displayed in the terminal, to decimal values. If we enter that again, we get the same results back. It's it's printing out the same characters but it's mapping them to different decimal values and then we have an option to take a test where it's asking us to perform some calculations so it looks like then we need to and you see that we've entered that we did that too slowly so we need to obviously script this to automate the process because um because we're not gonna be able to answer 500 questions manually anyway and it looks like what we need to do then is map these characters these unicode characters to the decimal values and then so we'll try and run through 500 questions and each question that comes to us will replace the Unicode values with whatever whatever values are mapped here with the one we provided the help and then we'll perform the calculation we'll send off the answer and we'll do that 500 times and hopefully get back a flag although our terminal is not able to display these Unicode characters we could take a copy of them and just go and paste them in somewhere else where they can be displayed for example in the browser and we can see which emojis these are linked to um, so let me just open up the script which I put together to solve this. Um, Exploit.py and let me just talk through what's going on here. So using Pwn Tools and the regular expression library here and let me create a bit of space here. So the program starts here. We're launching the remote server. I've got the context, context level set to info. You can set this to debug while you're writing the script so that you can see what's being sent and received quite easily and that helps kind of working out in terms of these sending and receiving lines sometimes you need to send more or less or you need to 
uh, deal with new lines and stuff like that. So you can you can swap between this. I, I change that to debug while I'm writing the script, and then change it to info to clean up the output a little bit. Uh, so we just have these de declared anyway. We get our mapping dictionary, so we know that at the beginning we need to press one, and it's going to give us our Unicode character mappings. And that's all we're doing here. We're pressing one. We're receiving two lines until it gets to the mappings. And then we're just doing some regex to find out all the mappings. So select the Unicode character and the arrow and then the decimal that it maps to. That'll print that'll produce ten mappings. And then we just loop through each of those, split it on the arrow and the space, so that now we have just the Unicode character and the decimal in um, in an array basically and then we just create a, a dictionary of mappings where each Unicode character is a key in the dictionary and each number is the value for that and then we return that back so actually let me just before we uh, just before we have a look at the full code let's try let's take a look at that so if you just uh, print out here mapping dictionary run python exploit and you'll see there so we've sent that off it's come back and it's it's mapped each unicode character to its respective decimal value in this let me actually just change this to debug as well so you can see what i mean in terms of getting some more output so you can see what's being sent and what's being received here and um, this is quite a handy feature in pwn tools uh, but that's 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 fine so we've got a mapping is done let's go and uncomment this. Uh, so we get our mappings and then we're going to send off two because we want to take a test and we need to take the test 500 times. So we're going to loop through 500 times calling this take test and passing in our dictionary and the process as well. And that's basically just going to loop through, well this is going to loop through 500 times. It's going to grab the question and decode it, strip it of any new lines and stuff. And we're going to, the mapped question here, so this join mapping, essentially what this is going to do is it's going to loop through each uh, let me let me run this again. The mapping it'll loop through each character in this question, and it'll replace any of these Unicode values, which are in this mapping dictionary, with the with the value from the mapping dictionary. So it's basically loading all these as the keys and then replacing them with the values, so that we can just pass it to eval, which will just evaluate the question, and then return our answer and we've just got some infos to print out what's going on as it happens and that's basically it we loop that 500 times and then eventually we'll get our flag back so if this is on info um, this is set to info at the moment so it's not gonna be too much noise let's try and run this against the server and see what happens you see it loops, it goes through very quickly each time it loops through it's telling us whether we got the answer correct the time that we did it in and we can see the unmapped questions and the mapped question. I'll just wait till it finishes here so we can see a bit clearer what's going on. You can see we've got a flag there at the end. So yeah, each question it's looping through, it, it, it extracts the unmapped question and then it converts it using the mappings that we have into decimals. It calculates the answer using eval and then it returns the response to find out whether we got the answer correct and in what time. And then once it's run 500 times, it's going to extract the flag. And that's it for the Alien Camp Challenge. I'll put this script on GitHub and some other scripts from this CTF as well if anybody wants a copy of them.